In this video, we're going to show you how to create a dry ice effect by using the Fume FX, Particle Flow, and the Effector. As you can see, this scene we have a simple Particle Flow setup, and we use it to emit smoke and temperature inside the Fume FX grid. Because of the injected temperature, the smoke will rise. But we'll use an effector that will invert the gravity inside it, so this will cause the smoke to fall. So let's begin. So for start we're going to create a film effects grid. It will be 1000 units wide, 1000 units long and 200 units tall. However we're going to position it a little bit lower so it will include all the particles so this will be around minus 90 units and we're going to select our collision geometry so in the geometry la layer you can pick the collision this is a group of two objects including floor light geometry and the uh, main floor both those uh, geometry objects are in a group as you can see a group is named colleges and when group is shown with the G we can change one object collision object and other all other will update automatically if you uncheck the group then you can change each one individual so we have those two objects as uh, collisions and we're going to create particle source from the particle source we're going to choose particle flow events o2 where all our particles are generated it nothing special particles emit for 150 frames 3000 of them and they have speed of 150 and they're delete, deleted by particle age of 10 with a vari variation of 2 so within the film effects particle source we're going to change some parameters. As you can see, particles are quite small, so we'll increase radius to 4. The fuel is not going to be used, but we'll use temperature. Uh, 300 will be okay, and the smoke amount of 2 will be okay as well. If we would run a simulation, as it is right now, the smoke will constantly rise because it's all the te temperature that causes the smoke to rise for the buoyancy reason. But we're going to create an effector that is going to change the, the, the gravity value and tweak all the parameters in there. So we're going to use a little bit bigger than it is and okay a little bit higher than the film effects and make sure to position it the same way as the film effects so we're going to to position effector we're going to move it a little bit above the ground level which is for us the floor light geometry so we're going to move it around 10 units uh, above the level so in this area between the floor geometry and the effector the gravity will be normal and cause the smoke to rise when it enters the effector, the gravity will be inverted and the smoke will fall. So, 
actually smoke will oscillate between the boundary around the boundary of, of the effector. Now when we have effector position, we're going to use it for the hum effects. So we'll call it grave gravity inwards and we'll use the multiply type and scalar value of minus 3 and we're going to plug this effector into the film effects gravity so when smoke enters the effector area the gravity will be multiplied by minus 3 so it will be 3 times stronger as it is but in the opposite direction now we're going to adjust other simulation parameters for the general parameters we're going to use simulation that is around 300 frames long we won't need a few so we'll turn it off inside the simulation so only smoke is going to be exported and the playback 300 frames as well for the simulation we're going to need conservative direction because we want smoke not to dissipate and to keep the mass and the momentum so the quality is going to be a little bit higher 5 time scale will be ok we'll use a bit lower vorticity and we're going to introduce a really really small amount of turbulence as you can see our grid spacing is 1 and the turbulence strength is 100th size of the voxel this is a realistic amount because higher values will cause unrealistic swirling and commotion so scale of 10 will be ok 10 frames and detail one level will be just fine smoke buoyancy will use a little bit higher smoke buoyancy but it won't affect much uh, simulation we don't want any dissipation and for dissipation of the temperature also set zero that's pretty much what it is about our simulation as you can see we have everything sorted out by the layers so in the fx layer we have effector particle source film fx and the particles themselves so we're ready to start the simulation Then we can add one of the arm lights. It's going to be Arnold Master Light. We'll disable fire rendering and we'll enable cast and receive shadows we'll adjust smoke capacity to be 10 and set ambient color to black we need occlusions as otherwise it won't look good at all and we need shadows
So after the simulation is done, you should get the smoke that expands almost to the to the rim of this object. So I created the preview animation and it looks like this. So we have the smoke that crawls above the floor and it gets all out to the end of this rim. For rendering we have set up Arnold materials and Arnold lights. In the group of lights we have Arnold master light that's directional light that illuminates the scene from the right side. We also have two mesh lights that uses floor, floor geometry. Those are one lights one the one underneath its floor light geom and another one is the light on the stairs. The, the main object light, the main floor object has Arnold standard surface material light and it has uh, specular and metalness, which actually prolongs rendering time because of the reflections that has to be calculated. Volumetric effects like dry ice are very transparent by nature and they cause render times to be a lot longer than when you render a volcano or something that's very opaque. So those transparent effects require lots of ray bounces from the camera, from the light and internal. So to optimize this scene, we can adjust volume indirect ray depth and reduce it to one. That will result with less internal scattering. And we can also reduce specular or even you can turn metalness to zero. We can reduce the camera samples, volume indirect samples, whatever you can to reduce render times. By default presets, the scene rendered at frame 50, like uh, something like 9, 9 minutes and 14 seconds. And this little optimization bring it down to five minutes and eight seconds. In RAM player we can compare on the left is the default settings and on the right is optimize. You can see in the specular the difference and a little bit more fireflies on the optimize image because of lower amount of samples. Further down you could optimize by increasing the smoke density and even reduce the camera samples even more. Thank you for watching and see you next time with new tutorial.